one uh, Yemeni named Ahmed Khadr who uh, went to Estonia a couple years ago when they finally started resettling Yemenis right, and get, kind of gave up on Yemen, um, stabilizing enough that they could repatriate Yemenis, agreed to let me come visit him. Um, and so I went and I spent sort of a week in Estonia. I talked, spent several days, it's all day with him in his apartment and riding the bus around town, speaking to his friends. I went to the mosque with him where he, he prays, sort of a very small mosque in Tallinn. And sort of getting a sense of his life and his, he's sort of glad to be out, but also the struggles. He's in this strange place where he doesn't, he's trying to learn the language, he's, but doesn't speak it well enough yet, although they do speak English there and he speaks English, so that helps. That actually may be a crutch for him. Very small Muslim community, so hard to get halal food, and he sort of misses his family and hasn't been able to reunite with them and so forth. And his, his, but larger than that, his sort of crippling fear, as he described it, that he will be blamed if a bomb goes off somewhere, they don't know who did it. Because, oh, that ex-Gitmo guy must have done it. And in his mind, at least, he was falsely blamed even for being involved in Al-Qaeda because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and he's just sort of has trouble leaving his apartment sometimes because he's just like, what if something goes off? And he gradually got used to going around Estonia but would not has not traveled to other countries in the EU, even though he's allowed to, um, at least on paper because it's the Schengen zone. Um, even though he, you know, he lost his twenties and was kind of like to see the world, but what if some bomb goes? He like he likes the fact that he thinks he's under surveillance in Estonia because that means they'll know if something goes off that he was just, you know, having having cereal in his apartment when that happened.